This week, battling back the inspiring connection between Canada's wounded soldiers and the Paralympics, and keeping athletes on target in their sport and their education. Bell Spirit of the Game is brought to you in part by Bell, connecting, celebrating, and supporting Canadian athletes. By Royal Canadian Mint, official supporter of the Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games. By General Motors, making dreams possible for Canadian athletes. And by RBC, putting athletes first since 1947. You are watching one of the world's most versatile military transport aircraft. It's the CC-130 Hercules as it taxis for takeoff here at 17 Wing at Canadian Forces Base Winnipeg. Hello, I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to Bell Spirit of the Game. A military base might seem like an unusual place to begin a show in amateur sport. Unusual, that is, until you find out about the truly remarkable connection being made between soldiers wounded while serving their country and the people that recruit athletes to represent Canada as Paralympians. January 15, 2006. A car packed with explosives slams into a Canadian armored personnel carrier, killing a Canadian diplomat and injuring three soldiers, including medic Master Corporal Paul Franklin, who loses both his legs. I could talk about the legs, I could talk about how it happened, but really the important part is, is that I've lost that piece of me. And I've got to fight that every single day when I see someone run, when I go to the mountains and I look at the mountain and I can see someone getting ready to go for a hike, that's the pieces I've got to fight and get back. June 21st, 2006. Corporal Ryan Elric of Winnipeg is on his second tour in Afghanistan. He's in the lead vehicle of a convoy when it runs over an anti-tank mine. I vaguely remember being pulled out of the turret. I vaguely remember being strapped to a stretcher and being loaded onto a helicopter. And then I uh, woke up at the hospital in Kandahar and um, the surgeon asked me if I knew what had happened and I'm like, no. And he says, yeah, you've lost part of your legs, unfortunately. And I'm like, I looked down at my legs and I was so doped up, I just kind of went, no, oh, okay, and I went back to sleep. Many Canadians with disabilities turn to sport. Some even become Paralympians. But the Canadian Paralympic Committee would like to see more, especially young people. We need more athletes. Uh, that's one of our challenge. Uh, our Paralympians are, are aging and they're depleting. We just need to get the message out there, let them know the opportunities exist, build that base of persons participating in Paralympic sport, which by default will naturally increase the amount of Paralympians on our teams. The Canadian Paralympic Committee looked south of the border, where its U.S. counterpart had a similar recruiting problem. To help solve it, the U.S. Paralympic Committee and the U.S. military created the Wounded Warriors Program. It's expected at the 2008 Paralympic Games in Beijing, 10% of the U.S. team will be veterans from the Iraq War. The Canadian Paralympic Committee decided to try a similar program. They call it Soldier On. The program Soldier On is to include sport in the rehabilitation of Canadian Forces members with a physical disability. We've traditionally been a peacekeeping nation. Um, the reality is we're sending over thousands of soldiers and, and they're going into theater. Uh, they're fighting the enemy and there is the likelihood that they will acquire a disability. From a starting point, you know, they are young, fit individuals who just now happen to have a disability. So they have a great starting off point and advantage competitively uh, than the general public with disabilities. So it's a great talent pool for us to pick off from to uh, generate Paralympians for this yeah. country. Stationed at 17 Wing in Winnipeg, Search and Rescue Tech Sergeant Andrew McLean is proud to be part of a team that on any given day can be jumping into unknown territory knowing their survival depends on each other. It is this feeling of comradeship and responsibility that inspires him to run ultra marathons to help raise money for Soldier On. They're still part of the forces. When someone becomes injured or disabled, the isolation is, uh, is a, you know, to put it mildly, is a killer. And, uh, you know, these Canadian Forces members deserve every opportunity um, that we get on a day-to-day -day basis, just like anybody else. And uh, that opportunity needs to be funded. It needs to be driven by, by us, the, the team, the CF members, ourselves. 
In fact, the relationship between the military and Paralympics goes back a long way. During World War II, disabled soldiers were left in hospital beds and virtually ignored. Four out of five dying within a year. Neurosurgeon Dr. Ludwig Gutmann took notice of these soldiers and founded a spinal injury center at the Stoke Mandeville Hospital near London. He believed the road to recovery for these veterans could be through sport. In 1948, Dr. Gutmann initiated the first wheelchair Olympics. The Stoke Mandeville Games would eventually become the Paralympics. Dr. Louis Gutmann, the credit where credit is due, it's really him that started this program and we've just kind of revived that, that inspiration and, that fire and reignited that fire. But if Soldier On is to succeed, it will need the support of the Canadian Armed Forces. And nobody is more enthusiastic than the Chief of the Defence Staff, General Rick Hillier. Why is this Soldier On program so important to you? Well, first of all, let me just say from the Canadian Paralympic Committee and the uh, Soldier On program, this is awesome. Uh, this is, means the world to men and women in uniform. First, at the first level, it's the country in a variety of ways and our population, Canadians, are paying attention to their sons and daughters who wear our nation's uniform and pay attention to what they're doing for our country and what it means for our country and showing their appreciation. I think that's the first and perhaps most important thing. Uh, probably just a, probably just a balance issue, right? But uh, you know, it's, it's getting there. I'm focusing on getting my strength back, you know, uh, as yeah, much as possible, and it's something to shoot for. You know, every time I go to the gym, I'm able to accomplish something that perhaps the previous vision I wasn't able to do. You know, as I listen to you, you're so upbeat. It seems uh, like you have no regrets at all. I still mourn a loss. You know, I I'm, sometimes I, I get out of bed in the morning. I'm just, uh, you know, I, I have some some black days. However. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any regrets about, about the job I was doing or, or, or being a soldier because I knew, I knew the risks. Um, soldiers get hurt, uh, especially you know, when you're outside the wire and you're doing your job for real. Soldiers get hurt, soldiers die. I don't want to walk, I want to run. I want to do what I did. So I don't see walking as an improvement. It's just only a step. And I, that's with every single soldier who comes back. That's how I'm gonna learn to run. eventually without bars. And how you do that is by leaning forward, and that propels you forward. So pretty amazing stuff. And so what's so neat about the Soldiering On program is it will allow a Paralympian to help me get to that next point so that I can learn to, to run as quickly and as fast as them. And if that works, maybe I can actually join, who knows. It was recently announced that Ottawa will be the site for the first Canadian summit, bringing together both Paralympians and injured Canadian soldiers. Now your goal is the Paralympics. You're talking summer, it might be winter in 2010, but 2008 you told me is a little early. Oh uh, uh, well, yeah, it's 2007 already and I haven't even started really running yet. So you're uh, looking at 2012? Per perhaps, yeah. Um, I guess I, I, you have to you know, meet a national standard and everything like that and actually try out. But that, that is ultimately my, my goal is to run in the, in the Paralympics in 2012. I'll make you a deal. Okay. I'm going to be in London hosting. You get there, I'll interview you in the studio. Cool. Right on, it's a deal, man. Good luck. All right, cheers. Thank you. Yep. When Bell's Spirit of the Game returns, we'll meet a soldier who's about to soldier on. Welcome back to Canadian Forces Base Winnipeg. You might think the program Soldier On, designed to involve wounded Canadian soldiers in the Paralympics, would be a difficult sell to a soldier with a severe disability. Well, don't tell that to Sergeant Steve Daniel. In fact, Sergeant Daniel is determined to be successful at something he has never done before. For Sergeant Steve Daniel, the military has been his life since he was a cadet at the age of 14. He joined the Army in 1993, did tours in Croatia, Bosnia, and most recently in Afghanistan. 
He made it through those missions unscathed, and on his return home, Sergeant Daniel fulfilled a dream. You know, I was always fascinated with, uh, you know, footage from World War II, particularly, uh, you know, airborne troops, and it just, it just amazed me that someone could work up the courage to actually jump out of an airplane into a, into a combat zone, and yeah, I, I guess, you know, it, it sort of inspired me to, to, to become one. It was June 30th, 2005. Uh, I was a candidate on uh, what we call a military free fall parachute instructor course, uh, learning how to teach uh, basic uh, free fallers. Beautiful, warm, sunny day. Uh, we did a very successful jump and uh, I was coming in for landing uh, a little bit uh, faster than normal. And uh, I tried to, tried to break probably a little too late and uh, what happened was I ended up uh, landing straight on uh, my buttocks and uh, fracturing my T12 vertebrae. Just completely blew apart and uh, was paralyzed instantly right there on the drop zone. It's a, a feeling of disbelief at first. I mean, you can't really comprehend, uh, you know, not being able to, to walk, walking one day and not being able to walk the next. I mean, you just have to learn how to, how to function again as a, as a human being. I find it very important to always, always look ahead, look towards the future. I mean, I have, a, I have a young son, I have a wife, I got a family who loves me, and uh, I mean, you go on for, for yourself and for them, so you can't just stop living because you're in a wheelchair. He never felt sorry for himself, and that's what I think makes our relationship even better now, is that um, he's very inspiring with just getting up, getting out of bed every day, and making the most of it. Mount Washington on Vancouver Island is a spectacular alpine setting. It's also home to the Society for Adaptive Snow Sports, which teaches disabled people to ski. And that's why Soldier On is looking at it as a possible location for its program. Steve Daniel has come here thanks to money raised by Sergeant Andrew McLean. Honestly, being in a wheelchair and you know having this, uh, this, this uh, traumatic event happen to me, I'm a little bit of a chicken now. I mean, I saw the saw the hill coming up here and uh, the lift going up to this mountain. I mean, being from Ontario, I'm not used to this kind of altitude, so I was a little nervous. Everybody that comes, they're, they're apprehensive, obviously. You know, we're putting them in some kind of a weird contraption and we're strapping them in there like a torture chamber and putting things on their arms and, uh, and taking them out in the snow. Glenn Ho is a 31-year veteran of the Canadian military. He's one of 30 retired military personnel who serve as volunteer ski instructors here with the Mount Washington program. I understand you've done a little bit of skiing before, before your injury. Yeah, um, not too much. Not, not too much, okay. Okay, we're, believe me, we're gonna have you skiing here in, in no time at all. People are saying, I don't have any legs and you're gonna put me on a ski and take me to the top of the mountain and you're gonna do what? If they would just give us a, give us a chance. We can do wonderful things for you, and I've seen it change people's lives for sure. There's absolute freedom when I'm up here on the hill. You know, right now I still need a little bit of assistance uh, getting on and off the lift, but uh, in, in the future I'll probably be able to do that myself, I'm thinking. I never thought I'd be where I am right now, you know, on Monday. You know, it just, it's, it's unbelievable the, the, the feeling you get. I mean, to, to get out of my wheelchair and uh, get in a monoski to go up, you know, a, a BC uh, ski hill and, and carve your way down, you know, feel the, the fresh air, the wind in your face, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling. Alright, you guys should have had the camera up there. You missed some big air up there. It was airborne. Oh. <laughs> With the Soldier On program, hopefully uh, there will be funding available for people to do things like this, you know, not only, not only skiing, but uh, all kinds of sports, you know, this is this is better therapy than uh, than you can than you can buy. One, two, one, go. Lots of times, at, standing at the bottom of the hill after I've taken a student for a, for a couple of days or something, to watch them come down there, I uh, even right now when I talk about it, I get a little. Uh, it's a it's extremely rewarding. 
Steve has already represented this country. You know, he should be offered the opportunity to get out and do these kinds of things. I'm